is a Fox DHX coil shock. It's basically a Fox Float X without the foreskin. As we can see, the shape of the shaft resembles, well, you know what it resembles. Now there's some interesting things that go into the DHX. You can swap out the piggyback reservoir length to fit in different frames. And all you have to do is unscrew it with a 30 millimeter wrench and set a new IFP depth. Now this is RockShock, I mean Fox's attempt at making a RockShock product featuring 12 clicks of marked low speed compression. This is the only Fox shock that has numbers on the compression lever. Like I said, it's Fox's attempt at making a rock shock product. She features 10 clicks of low speed rebound and this adjuster is a little bit difficult to use. But let me tell you the most important thing about the DHX. She's got a super thick shaft. And did I mention it's made out of hardened steel? And who doesn't like a girthy, hard shaft? But hold up. Do you see this thing behind the shock? Well, it's called a yoke. And if your bike has one of these things, be very careful, okay? Now, any pre-2024 specialized bike is unapproved according to nine different people at Fox. Even though on the specialized website, it says the Levo can use the DHX. And the 2024 Canevo Comp comes with a DHX. So this is a bit confusing because this Canevo Comp is the exact bike. I have a 2021 Canevo and we can tell it's the same from the pictures and the geometry chart. Now the bottom line is if your frame breaks and it's pre-2024, Fox is not going to help you. So I had this marvelous idea. I was like, I'm gonna make that 24 Kinevo. So I bought this 38, but I was too dumb to read the pink bike listing and the steer tube's too short. So I got this DVO Onyx on the front with the DHX on the rear. So if this nerd talk isn't getting you fired up, let me put something stiff on it. Ooh. Okay, this is a 205 by 60 shock and by a 2.8 Fox spring to match that shock. Now the damper is the oil part, which you're looking at. And it weighs one pound, one ounce, or 0.49 kilograms. Now, if you wanna know how many grams it weighs, you need to unsubscribe and leave the video because the only thing that should be measured in grams is marijuana. Now, if you buy a DHX, you're probably cheap. So you're gonna buy the cheap shock or the cheap coil. And it weighs two pounds, three ounces altogether. And that's pretty darn heavy. There is a weight penalty for running a coil shock. The super light DVO coil comes in at 12 ounces and that is four ounces lighter. I don't know if it's worth the extra 80 bucks. Now, if you ever wanted to add a coil to your bike, basically you're gonna find an online spring calculator, put in all your dimensions for your bike, your weight, your rear wheel travel, your shock size and your desired sag, and it will poop out the correct coil spring. Now in my head, I weigh 210 pounds, but the scale is telling me something different. So really I'm closer to like 230 pounds with my gear. So don't lie to the spring calculator. So it's telling me to run a 600 pound spring. Now, if you don't want your garage to look like this, you need to buy that. It's called the spring Dex. It's an adjustable coil spring from 540 all the way up to 610. So you can kind of adjust how it feels on the trail. And it's actually easier than adding air to an air shock. But to get the full Fox experience, I'm gonna take it out on a 600 pound spring that costs $40 and see how it goes. So the first thing that sticks out to me on the Fox DHX, well, it feels like a really stiff coil shock. Usually they're just like super supple off the top, bro. For sure, the DHX is an excellent peddler, but this should not be the reason you bought a coil shock. Am I wrong? Aesthetically speaking, the DHX is definitely a handsome shock, and I am a fan of that thick steel stanchion. 
and I'll talk about that extra rod on my stiff shaft a little bit later. So after our 3000 foot Sufferfest uphill, the first ascent on the DHX was a little bit surprising. Since the Fox Flodex is the best trail shock ever made of all time up to 2024, I was a little bit surprised to find that Fox DHX not as supple off the top and kind of blowing through all its travel. But this is the first ride so I don't want to judge it too hard. Now when it comes to all day epics, boring single track with epic views like this, personally I am going to reach for a Fox Float X at this time. The DHX has been pretty disappointing so far. Now coil shock, air shock, they're all compromises. Usually you get a slower moving shock with a coil with some additional traction. But when it came to the steep sections and tight switchbacks, the DHX is not giving me the additional traction that I expect from its compromise in weight and everything else. Now this is how loose I was running the coil spring and the DHX does not have any small bump sensitivity that most coil shocks do. So it's a little bit disappointing. But I may be oversprung even though the spring calculators are calling for this exact spring. And that extra shaft on my shock, it's basically a tool to help you measure sag. And I'm not having a good time with it so far, but I'll check in later and tell you how it goes. The exact reason I told you to get the spring decks earlier in the video is because if you're oversprung on certain coil shocks, it can feel like absolute garbage. So we're gonna strap this big thick shaft up with that spring dex coil and take her out for another spin. Now all the noise you're hearing is coming out of the DVO Onyx 38 air spring fork. The float X, I mean, sorry, the DHX is absolutely silent during its operation through the full travel and that's a good thing. So I was jumping on it with the 540 pound spring and it felt too light so I tightened her back up. One thing to note about the spring decks, depending on the size of your dick beaters, it can be a little difficult to spin the ring. The DHX feels like trash on blue flow trails. It feels unbalanced. Now I'm a huge fan of the Fox setup guides because they're very helpful and accurate. There's no recommended rebound in the setup guide. So basically it's pretty difficult to set the DHX up. You've got to test and experiment and find your own setting. Now with a 60 pound lighter spring, the small bump sensitivity of the DHX is still very disappointing. Now it is better than an air shock, but it's disappointing for a coil shock. Let me explain further. Now this is a 540 pound spring on the DHX and it looks like an air shock when I'm pushing on the saddle. And this is a Suntour Vora. We can see it has much more small bump sensitivity to small inputs. Now I'm not very good at making friends. Now the Fox guys hate me. The Suntour guys hate me from the last video. Just remember you're watching a guy on the internet tell you about a shock he's riding. So basically I'm very disappointed with the DHX at this time. Now this is a fully not recommended adjustment from Fox, but it did fix the Suntour Vora's problem. So I unscrewed the air filling piggyback screw with a small torque wrench. You're going to need a small little adapter that you use to service the IFP and you're going to connect your shock pump to the IFP. Now I already looked up before I went on this ride. It takes 150 PSI and I'm going to drop 50 PSI out of the shock. I'm also going to add like two or three clicks of rebound in the faster direction. A lot of these heavy duty forks like Fox 38, RockShox Zeb, Coil Shocks, they can feel harsh if the rebound isn't fast enough. Like I told you before, the rebound adjuster is pretty difficult to use on the DHX. Now there was some improvement in the DHX from a faster rebound, but I'm going to give you a little hindsight here. This fork was just on my friend's bike and the rebound was not in the correct setting. So a bad fork can make a shock feel bad. So we're definitely not giving up on the DHX quite yet, but the small bump sensitivity was still disappointing, even with a dropped IFP pressure.
Checking out the Fox website, as we can see, the biggest shock they make is 230 by 65, and that's the one I have. It's not really a big downhill plush bucket like the DHX2. You could potentially could have a better experience with a 210 by 55 shock. And I may be an Imperial Princess complaining about his small bump sensitivity, but I'll always try to fix something I'm not happy with. Now, one benefit of a coil shock, and especially the DHX, it's a very simple shock. Basically pull the spring off, and a crescent wrench will pull the main seal head out of the shock. And let's check out what Fox is doing inside of here. Now this is the main technology within the DHX and it's kind of a massive piston, even in comparison to a Fox Float X2. So when I pulled this piston out, there was quite a bit of friction and that may be where this shock lost its small bump sensitivity. Now the DHX takes lighter oil than even the Fox Float X2 and it feels like it has less small bump sensitivity. So it's kind of interesting. So of course, I'm gonna try to butcher this thing together in the Sam Pilgrim garage. This is Motor X 2.5 weight oil. Super expensive good stuff. We're gonna fill her back up and do a botched home bleed job. Now Fox went full rock shock on this guy and it's pretty easy to service and doesn't require too many special tools. You can get the bleeding done with that brake bleed Shimano kit from Amazon for $20. And the DHX, being a coil shock, it doesn't have that floppy foreskin or AKA air can to put back together. So once you're done bleeding, you're basically done. Now this is before we can see there's not much movement. Now we have quite a bit more movement in the coil, but we gotta go ride it to see if it actually worked. Now this is the third or fourth ride on the DHX. And I got a really interesting fact about the DHX. Basically, I was struggling on the rebound settings, and then I ended up running the same rebound that I run on a Fox Float X. And that makes sense because it's the same damper, just has a coil spring. Now, if you've ever rode a Float X and used this guide, you can basically copy the rebound settings into the DHX. So the performance with the faster rebound is much better on pounding blue flow trails. I was having an absolutely amazing time. So don't be afraid to walk your rebound faster, one click at a time on the DHX. Now the small bump sensitivity, I'm gonna say it's 15 or 20% better with the lighter damper oil. And keep in mind, this is kind of a gray zone. I don't know if it's gonna ruin the shock or it's approved by Fox. So do that at your own discretion. Now, my favorite thing about the Fox Float X, the air spring version, is it was an amazing jumper. So how does the DHX do in the mini jump lines? Well, it's harder to control through the travel because it's a coil spring and that's kind of disappointing. And the other great thing about the Float X was it was a shock that you could move through the travel super quickly and it was just, it is the best trail shock you can buy. And the DHX feels like a sluggish coil shock without the traction of a big heavy duty DH plush bucket. So. Basically, feels like this DHX has a identity crisis. She's got a big thick shaft, but she thinks she's a trail shock. So the rest of the day, I basically played around with spring rates and was comparing them to the calculator's suggestions. So check out this calculator because it gave me the best recommendation. Now there's several spring calculators out there on the internet, but this is TF tuned and it basically told me to run a 570 pound spring and it was the absolute most accurate. And the only way to get a 570 pound spring is to get the spring decks. My experience on the DHX wasn't particularly good, but let me know in the comments if you like it or you don't like it. And keep in mind, this is a 57 pound e-bike that does better with DH stuff. Now I suspect the lack of high speed compression adjust or bottom out control on the DHX is the real shortcoming. So why is the DHX so unpopular? I don't know, but both these shocks were like 300 bucks on Facebook marketplace and they were both takeoffs. Unfortunately, the second shock is for my Amish bike and the headset is cracked. Super surprise here, specialized enduro with a cracked headset and I don't get a warranty frame because it was used. 
Now you gotta click this video on the screen to find out why the Fox Float X, the air can version of the DHX, is the absolute best thing you can put on your trail bike. 